Friends, we are gathered together to witness and bless the joining together of Caitlin and Vineeth in marriage. I ask you now to pray for them, not just to pray today or only in this place, but to pray in your hearts continually and over the years. Praying is a means of intercession. It is a way of supporting people near and far. It fosters an outlook, a sustained energy, which creates a marriage and makes love and forgiveness lifelong. Who presents this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. Eternal love never fails. Our love needs to forgive and to be forgiven. As we pray and forgive, we minister reconciliation. Those who marry are ministers to each other of reconciliation and change. As husband and wife grow together, they foster one another's strengths and they provide each other with the reassurance and love needed to overcome their weaknesses. From this beginning, two people are drawn to a completely new life. They become awake to each other, aware of each other, sensitive to each other's needs. Caitlin and Vineeth, you're welcome. We pray that you will be upheld and cheered during your life together, that your promises be honored, your words true now and in the time to come. For our part, we ask you make a public declaration. So Caitlin, will you repeat after me as soon as I flip the page? I love Vineeth. I love Vineeth. And I want to marry him. And I want to marry him. Vineeth, will you repeat after me? I love Caitlin. I love Caitlin. And I want to marry her. And I want to marry her. The marriage of Caitlin and Vineeth unites their families and creates a new one. And so they ask for your blessing. Do you who represent their families near and afar rejoice in their union and pray a blessing upon them? If so, please say, we do. Will all of you do everything in your power to uphold and care for these two persons in their marriage? If so, please say, we will. We will. Today we have two readings. The first reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. It reads as follows. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Here ends the New Testament reading. Our second reading comes from the Sanskrit verses written by Kalidasa, translated into English. It is entitled, Look to this day. Look to this day, for it is life, the very life of life. It, in its brief course, lie all the verities and realities of your existence, the bliss of growth, the glory of action, the splendor of achievement, are but experiences of time. For yesterday is but a dream, and tomorrow is only a vision, and today, well lived, makes yesterday a dream of happiness and tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day, such is the salutation to the ever new dawn. Here ends the reading. The passage from 1 Corinthians is often called the love passage. Its writer, Paul of Tarsus, is the most legendary of the early Christian missionaries. He spent almost a year with the Christian community in Corinth, a city in modern day Greece. He was helping these Corinthians to cultivate their gifts and talents as disciples of Jesus Christ. Gifts like wisdom, knowledge, speaking in tongues, interpreting tongues. But shortly after Paul left Corinth, the church began arguing about which gifts and talents were better than others. Which ones, in fact, made people more special to God than others. These arguments displeased Paul so much that he sent them a stern letter, a very stern letter, saying that we all have gifts and talents. And in the way that different muscles and ligaments connect our hands and our feet to our bodies, our gifts and talents helped connect us with one another for the purposes of worshiping and serving God. 
But none of these gifts and talents bear any significance if we don't have any love in our hearts when we use them. Ultimately, according to Paul, nothing matters more in the eyes of the holy than the practice of our love, the frequent practice of our love. We could be the greatest of all time. We could know everything, predict the future, be the most generous, self-sacrificing people in the world. But if we don't have love in our hearts or our relationships, our gifts and talents mean nothing. Rather than valued attributes, they become like meaningless noises that we make with gongs or drum cymbals. In contrast, when we practice the art of loving one another, our gifts and talents become instruments to better connect with God and with one another the most meaningful life there is. So when should we exhibit this practice of love? Do we need to be patient and kind and humble and selfless and justice-filled and hopeful all of the time? Or just certain times? Do we confine our love to a particular space or a particular people? For this answer, we turn to the wisdom of our second reading, look to this day, and the wise words of Kalidasa. As a Sanskrit writer in the fifth century, Kalidasa is one of India's most important literary figures. We don't know a lot about his life or what might have compelled him to write this poem, but perhaps he saw people who filled their lives with big promises about the practice of love, but rarely kept those promises. And maybe he saw people who pledged to love deeply and widely, but when the time came, they could not measure up, and so they squandered their values. So where and when do we practice love? According to Kalidasa, we must practice love in the present, which is both a time and a place. Look to this day, for it is the very life of life, he writes. Regardless of the spaces that we inhabit, where the time in which we live each and every new day provides a chance to offer love whenever we are and wherever we are, regardless of whom or who is with us. Our salvation depends on the love we live out right now, not the love we lived out in the past, not the love we will live out in the future, the love we live out in the present. The present moment is the only thing over which we have control. So why not fill this life with as much love as possible, right here, right now, in this place with the ones that surround us? Why not grant forgiveness today instead of tomorrow? Why not end regret now instead of dwelling in the past indefinitely? If we can live lives full of love today, then we will have nothing to regret of the past, and we will have visions of hopefulness for the future. Kalidasa beckons us to be present to this moment, fully, even if it causes our hearts to break. For broken hearts, in fact, are more loving instruments, making us better at giving and receiving love for the future, even as we learn from our mistakes in the past. As for this present moment, we turn now to the love that is being professed today by Caitlin and Vineeth in this space with all of their loved ones near and far. Caitlin and Vineeth, the purpose of this present ceremony is to celebrate how far you have come in your relationship with one another, how much you have changed each other for the better and for good, and to commend you for the journey towards a relationship filled with love all the rest of your days, but especially right now. So on behalf of all who are gathered here, let me offer you two blessings. In the times where you find your gifts and talents pitted against one another, may you remember that love is the most valuable attribute of all the gifts and graces in the world, and your loving relationship may be the best witness to the power of love, period. And in the times that you feel anxious about the future or regret about the past, may you remember the words of Kalidasa, that you are not alone in your present journey for the love which brought you here together is the same love that joins all of us to the both of you across space and time. We are here to support you no matter what, whenever you need it. Here ends the homily. We now come to the part of the ceremony where you will exchange vows with one another. So Caitlin, will you repeat after me? Beneath. Beneath. I take you. I take you. To be my husband. To be my husband. From this time onward. From this time onward. To join with you. To join with you. And to share and to share all that is to come all that is to come 
to give and to receive, to give and to receive, to speak and to listen, to speak and to listen, to inspire and to respond, to inspire and to respond, and in all our life together, and in all our life together, to be loyal to you, to be loyal to you, with my whole being, with my whole being, as long as we both shall live, as long as we both shall live. Rep Vinny, repeat after me. Caitlin. Caitlin, I take you, I take you to, be my wife, to be my wife from this time onward, this time onward to, join with you, to join with you and to share, and to share all, that is to come, all that is to come, to give and to receive, to, give and to, receive, to speak and to listen, to, speak and to, listen, to inspire and to respond, to inspire and, to respond and, in all our life together, and in all our life together to be loyal to you, to be loyal to you with, my whole being, with my whole being as long as we both shall live as long as we both shall live. May I have the rings, please? The rings that I hold in my hand are an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace, signifying to all the uniting of Caitlin and Beneath in holy marriage. Bless the giving of these rings that they who wear them may live in peace and continue in favor all the days of their life. All right. Caitlin, will you take Vinith's hand? Beneath. Beneath. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of our love. As a sign of our love. Beneath. Repeat after me. Caitlin. Caitlin. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of our love. As a sign of our love. You have declared your consent and vows before the created world and this congregation. And may the Almighty confirm your covenant and fill you both with grace. Now that Caitlin and Beneath have given themselves to each other by solemn vows with the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings, I announce to you that they are husband and wife. In the name of the one who creates, redeems, and sustains those whom the Almighty has joined together, let no one put asunder. We ask a blessing on this marriage that it may resemble the covenant between Christ and the church. Send therefore your blessing upon Caitlin and Beneath that they may surely keep their marriage covenant and so grow in love together that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. You may hold hands. May the Almighty keep you in love with each other so that peace may abide in your home as you serve in all that you do. And to the congregation near and afar, bear witness to the power of love in this world, so that those to whom love is a stranger will find in you generous friends. And may the grace, love, and communion of the almighty creator, redeemer, and sustainer go with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Caitlin and Venith, you may now kiss one another. <laughs>